on this channel i keep promising you we will talk about machine learning we will talk about machine learning we will talk about machine learning and we never seem to get a chance to do that well today we are remedying that today we are gonna talk about what the heck is machine learning if you're new to the channel my name is sadia khaf i am an electrical engineer doing phd in machine learning and on this channel we talk about machine learning that's today normally about scholarships grad school admissions all that fun stuff so if that's something that interests you you might want to stick around watch more of some of the videos and maybe subscribe if that interests you what is machine learning unless you're living under a rock you may have heard about all of these image generation models that are on the internet all of a sudden like dali 2 or jasper ai or photosonic or crayon and a gazillion other versions all based on gpt3 where what you do is you give a text prompt to an image generation engine for example an avocado armchair and it comes up with an image that is machine learning you may have also heard about some text editors um, or ai copywriters for example lex copy ai jasper ai or ai writer and a gazillion others where ai basically writes everything for you like a blog post that is also machine learning you have probably seen some ads on facebook or on youtube or on your twitter feed somewhere ai wrote this ad for you and it's working that's again machine learning or ai made this thumbnail and it's working and this kind of things all of these things use machine learning at the back end uh, to generate this type of content other than that there are other uh, aspects of your life where you don't know uh, you're being targeted by machine learning algorithms or AI. For example, the type of ads you see or the type of content that you see on Netflix, the way Netflix recommends you different content based on what you have watched or the way Google search results are indexed or the way your feed on Twitter or Facebook is updated. All of that has one or more forms of machine learning at the back, back end. But first things first, what's the difference between AI and machine learning. Well, AI and machine learning in recent years has increasingly been used interchangeably, but there's there's a difference. AI refers to artificial intelligence. It does not necessarily have to be machine learning. Machine learning is a specific domain, a specific set of algorithms, a specific type of subject, a specific uh, way of training the machines. But AI is more general. AI refers to a uh, artificial intelligence in computers in any man-made devices that mimic human behavior and try to act as intelligent as humans try to pass pass themselves as humans so artificial intelligence or artificial consciousness uh, is a broader term than machine learning machine learning is only just a small aspect of it where we are now teaching the machines to learn to do certain things most of those things involve one or more forms of decision making. So m training the machines to make decisions about some classifications, some regressions or some generative machine learning models related to generating some form of art like music or text or images or paintings and this type of fun stuff. That's machine learning. Let's talk about different types of machine learning. Well, there are broadly three different types of machine learning. Well, some can argue there are four types, there are five types, but basically they are all derivatives of these main three different types. Supervised machine learning, unsupervised machine learning, and reinforcement learning. The unsupervised machine learning can also further sometimes be separated into another class called semi-supervised machine learning. But for the sake of argument, we can broadly classify into uh, unsupervised machine learning as well. So what are these different types of machine learning? Well, the traditional machine learning uh, where you hear about deep learning and all that fun stuff, where you hear about large amounts of data sets and all that cool uh, fun stuff is basically the supervised machine learning. What is supervised machine learning? Supervised machine learning, first thing that would come to your mind would be big data sets. This is the type of machine learning that uses large amounts of data to train the machines to 
learn to do two different types of tasks broadly two different types of tasks one are classification tasks the other are regression tasks classification tasks basically means that you have a large data set and it is labeled you have certain labels for them for example you have image data set and you have certain labels for them like dog images are labeled dog all the cat images are labeled cat all the handwritten digits are labeled by the corresponding digit of them and then used using that particular data set you can train a machine learning model to be able to classify future images that it hasn't seen before but they are similar enough to the existing data set so if it has seen thousands and thousands of cat images in future if it sees a new image that it didn't see in that particular data set but it's a cat image it will be able to classify it as a cat these are all classification algorithms the other type of supervised machine learning algorithms are regression algorithms regression algorithms work more with prediction where for example based on historical data you predict some sort of future trends like weather forecast or population growth or any other forecasting type prediction type of models where you predict certain future trends based on certain historical past market data related to stocks or anything so anything that has some sort of prediction involved into it is uh, categorized as regression algorithms the second type of machine learning which is the unsupervised machine learning it doesn't it still requires uh, data sets but they don't have to be labeled so cat images dog images uh, plants images three types of different al- images but they are not label- labeled there is a type of algorithm called clustering so this unsupervised learning basically means there is data set but it doesn't have labels and the algorithm by itself using unsupervised learning can classify them into three different types of clusters cats dogs plants this type of learning is called unsupervised learning and there are certain algorithms like k means clustering or nearest neighbor uh, clustering and this type of different algorithms can cluster them into similar groups based on their similarities another version of this can be semi supervised learning which is a very popular form of machine learning right now where you have a combination of labeled and unlabeled data you have some Im- images that are labeled cat dog and plant you have other images that are not labeled and those two types of data sets are used together in order to do this type of clustering so those are the semi supervised type of learning now comes my field which is reinforcement learning and this in my opinion is the most exciting type of machine learning at the moment that's why i chose it that's why i'm doing a phd in it reinforcement learning is a new type of machine learning well no i cannot call it new like the foundation of this has been built in like 1980s or 90s and like it's very old but it's very popular now reinforcement learning involves real time decision making so there's no large data set there's no one time training it and then using it to apply to do some classification or regressions it's more real time real time interaction learning from the environment so reinforcement learning can be defined in one line by saying an agent learns from the environment to be able to make real time decisions about its environment so this involves all sorts of games all that uh, ai that you may have seen on the internet about ai beating itself or ai beating traditional uh, chess players or go players and all that all that fun stuff comes from reinforcement learning ai has ai agent has an environment surrounding it there are certain rules of the game that apply and it's like a rule based learning for example when you want to train the dog uh, there's an environment for example you're playing certain you're playing catch uh, that's the dog's environment and when you give a treat to the dog that is basically the reward that the agent the dog is the agent here the dog is the learner the machine learning model that's learning to play catch with you and basically getting a treat is the reward that it's getting getting so basically by playing this game over and over again it remembers when it got different types of rewards and that basically teaches it to play catch and that is the whole premise of reinforcement learning models in reinforcement learning models playing atari games playing any kind of other computer games playing open ai gym environments training different algorithms on that 
this Q learning, deep Q learning, source of actor critic, all these fun algorithms, they all come from inherently this simple principle of an agent interacting with an environment, getting certain type of reward from it, and based on that reward, learning what actions are good and what actions are bad and what actions should it keep doing in order to keep getting some higher and higher reward and maybe if it's a if it's a game that has an end state then win the game that's what reinforcement learning is what languages should you learn if you want to work with machine learning the obvious answer is python but i want you to know that it's not the only answer you can work with machine learning using other languages the second most popular one is C and C++. You can also work with machine learning using Java. You can also somewhat work with machine learning using R. And of course, the usual suspects like Julia, Scala, Ruby, Octave, SAS, and even MATLAB. Uh, believe it or not, my first machine learning algorithm that I wrote, it was a supervised machine learning algorithm, I guess, gradient descent and support vector machines. I wrote two algorithms, well, three algorithms, recurrent neural networks. All three of those algorithms I wrote from scratch by hand by even modeling some of my activation functions on paper, calculating their gradients on paper, and then writing them in MATLAB. My first ever machine learning algorithms were written in MATLAB without the use of any libraries, although even MATLAB now has a machine learning library if you are interested in using the libraries. So the point is you don't have to be bound by a certain language if you don't know it. Whatever language you know out of all of these, you can get started with machine learning using that. But of course, the most obvious choice if you are if you don't know any of these languages and if you want to choose one just to do machine learning would be Python. What are different popular courses that you can use to get started with machine learning? Because there are plenty of courses out there, both paid and free. Now, so these seven courses that you see on the screen are my personal recommendation if you want to get started with machine learning. And my criteria for that is the courses have to be free. The courses have to use open source tools or languages. And it should be at a pace where you can take the course on your own pace. It doesn't have to be a live cohort. You don't have to go attend a particular institute for it or you don't have to attend it in a certain month. You can take those anytime at your own pace and the pace of the learning should be beginner friendly to intermediate advanced friendly. They are not too difficult for a beginner, but they are also not too easy and too boring for an intermediate to advanced learner. So these are my personal recommendations that you see on the screen. I will also leave links to them in the video description. That brings us to the age old question of what tools do you need? to get started with machine learning. Those will be highly language dependent. So I will talk about the tools that you can use with Python. If you want to get started with machine learning and you are an absolute beginner, I recommend using Google Golab. You don't need to install anything. You already have access to it as long as you have any Google account, which means a Gmail account, a Gmail email address. So you can get started with Google Golab just by that you can run almost, almost 90% of the machine learning algorithms that you will ever come across on Google Colab. So as a beginner, I will highly recommend you to just don't install anything, don't get stuck on what editor is the best, what compiler is the best, what interpreter is the best, what do I need to install, how do I install it, how do I get it to work on Windows, how do I get it to work on Mac, how do I get it to work on Linux. Just open a browser window, Type Google Colab, go to it, start doing machine learning. No installation required. But if you are an intermediate or advanced uh, learner and you already have some experience working with some coding tools, then I would recommend a combination of Visual Studio Code with um, Anaconda to install some packages and optionally Jupyter Notebook if you want to debug some parts of your code line by line, then Jupyter Notebook would be a nice to have option if you want to debug some parts of your code manually. So this this is I do not recommend this for absolute beginners. This is only for intermediate to advanced learners. And if all of this talk about machine learning and reinforcement learning has gotten you excited about reinforcement learning, then I do have a, a three hour long video where I talk you through 
getting started with reinforcement learning step by step using Google Colab. I don't uh, ask you to install anything in that. So you can watch that here. Uh, I basically talk you through the example of dog training and how to get started with Google Colab and OpenAI Gym and write your very first Q-learning code hands-on in that particular workshop with me. So go watch that if you're interested in learning, in getting started with reinforcement learning. And I'll see you in the next one.